subscriber and with thanks to Leader Community Newspapers, I'm your host of the Round 12 edition of the Southern Football League web show. This week we're going to be speaking to the coaches uh, of this week's 88.3 Southern FM broadcast match of the round and that's Andrew Morwood from Oakley Districts and John Bennett from Heatherton. Please don't adjust your sets, it's not black and white TV. It's going to be a black and white uh, test on Saturday, though, down at Princess Highway Reserve. And we'll be speaking to these guys in just a moment. Stay tuned for uh, the Round 11 uh, edition of this SFL Top 5 and some parting shots where we'll ask some random footy uh, questions of uh, our guests here this evening and we'll see how quick they are on their feet. Firstly, we'll uh, speak to the home coach this week uh, of Oakley Districts, Andrew Moore. Welcome to, for joining us here in the studio. Thanks, Ron. Now, uh, you guys sit uh, with a positive win-loss record at the moment of 6-5 and five and only sit out of the final 5 on percentage. If there was one thing that you could put your finger on uh, to guarantee finals this season, what would that be down at Princess Highway? Uh, players, good players on the park. I think that's the key for everyone um, in local footy and um, we're slowly getting our side back together. Um, we knew we'd have a better half of the, um, a year and a later part of the year. so. I think on Saturday that sort of proved where we're heading. Fantastic. And John, while you uh, answer your phone, um, <laughs> welcome to you. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks for having us here. Yes. And Division 2 is, uh, is so close. Um, obviously, we've seen you guys already turn a turn uh, result around this year in, in losing to Hyde earlier in the season and, and knocking them over a couple of weeks ago. What do you need to do to stop Oakley doing that uh, this weekend? Um, Back to what Andrew said, have our better players on the park. I think this year, just going over it, it really... I mean, I don't know, the South Yarra lost one game, we've lost two, and then Murrum Burner now three. And, but I think virtually down like Oakley, Caulfield, Hyatt, it's pretty even if everyone's got their best side on the park. And, you know, we've lost to Hyatt and Murrum Burner, you say, yeah, you know, whether you get your best side or not, we're back to the field too, we're just like everyone else, so... It is the best side on the park has a long way to help him. It is very close mm. and uh, look outside of uh, the bottom two in, in Lindale and Moorabbin, it, it is a very competitive comp. How much, Andrew, um, time would you spend in, in the week leading up to this game focusing on the, uh, the headed and structure or, as opposed to your own game plan? Um, I spend most of the time on our game plan. Um, I think if we get our things right then uh, we'll go a long way towards winning. Um, having said that, I did go and see uh, the Heather and Hyde game the other week, so I uh, got a bit out of that game that I'll use for this week's encounter. Obviously nothing you'll share with us here tonight? No. <laughs> Fair enough too. Now, um, John, you guys sit uh, second on the ladder, two games clear in second spot, uh, only a game behind South Yarra. You're obviously chasing that, that first spot to, to have the week off, first week of the finals? Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, we've got a tougher sort of, we've got virtually Oakley this week, Moorabbin and then South Yarra. And uh, you know, Ashwood, then we sort of toughen up, finishing off with Caulfield and Marandina. So, uh, you know, we want to win every game, obviously, we want to finish on top. And there's no give me's, and I've been coaching in this comp a long time, and Oakley District at Oakley Districts is one of the toughest venues to go to. Sure is, and, and you had some uh, really good young guys go through that midfield of yours there, and uh, um, Jared Layton, Dan Killerup, and uh, Nathan Rule, who really stepped up and uh, taken 2009 by storm. Yeah, I think I mean those three would be easily, um, you know, leading our best and fairest. Um, young Dan Killerup had a sensational year for a you know, 19 year old guy. He want to play him everywhere all over the ground. He's that sort of play, you know, up forward on the ball, down back. Uh, wherever we played him this year, he's uh, you know, acquitted himself really well. Um, so, you know, the, the keys for us come Saturday, for sure. Fantastic. And, and John, your, your uh, key to 2009 so far has been more the experienced players, and the, the Clint Antonels and uh, Matt Jemisons and the like, yeah. along with a few fresh faces of, of your son. A couple, uh, yeah, well, Jemma actually said he just started to find a bit of form. He's been sort of struggling the last... Two weeks have been very good, and Clint's you know finding his feet a bit with the experienced blokes. We've had a good mix through through a lot of blokes, yeah. Well, it's uh, going to be a red hot contact uh, contest this week at Princess Highway Reserve between these two sides. Just briefly, now we'll take some time out to have a look at uh, the round eleven top five, and at number five saw the eighty eight point three Southern broadcast game. 
Well, we had some technical difficulties, yes, but we managed to bring you the coverage uh, over the hands-free telephone, and uh, I'm still going to be I'm going to be paying the bill for months on that. I can tell you right now. At number four were the bags of goals that we had over the weekend, with uh, Big Rowley from Sky bagging 12, a pair of 11s from Murray Silver at St Kilda City and Travis Ridgeway from St Paul's, and Ryan McAvoy from Caulfield, bagging 10 against Moorabbin down there at the Bear Cave. At number three in this week's top five is Travis Ridgeway. Now, generally when you've kicked 51 goals in five weeks and 11 for the game, and you're 30 metres out directly in front, you don't give off to teammates. But just for his team play and giving off twice in the last quarter, Trav gets number three spot this week. At number two, not normally a venue would be getting one of our spots on the top five, but it's Essex Heights Reserve, which on the weekend brought us our first draw in senior footy for 2009, where Ashwood 16-16, 112, drew with height 17-10, 112, uh, Obviously a very close contest there in Division 2, which brings us to our number one for this week. And it's the Southern Footy League Final Five, where in Division 2, only two and a half games currently separate third from eighth, as we've already discussed with two of the coaches here. Round 14 is going to be the big one. All those sides from third to eighth play each other, so stay tuned to 88.3 for all of your uh, Southern Footy League coverage on Saturday afternoons. Now we're just going to have some parting shots, ask these guys some uh, little off-beat football questions and see how light they are on their feet. So Andrew, just a couple of questions for you to start with. If you had a wish list of uh, one Division 2 player that's not wearing an Open Districts jumper at the moment to, to slot one on, who would that be? Um, Brent Williams would be a good hand. A forward, big yeah. target for him? Yeah, absolutely. Can Hawthorne in the AFL make finals in 2009? Yes. They can, will they? Yes. Hawthorne supporter. And no. <laughs> <laughs> and who will win the A4 wooden spoon? Melbourne. Melbourne? Yeah. John, some different questions to you, so you don't have, haven't had time to think about <laughs> it. Friday night footy in the Southern Footy League, yes or no? Yes. Excellent idea. Big supporter? Oh, I just think... Uh, Obviously, I encouraged it and pushed it with height, and they agreed, which was good with Roddy. And, and it also gets along all the other sides to give you a chance to have a look and all that. And obviously, that night, there was a lot of coaches from second division there. But there was also a few from first division, and no, I think it's good. We could have one of those once a week. I we agree. Great, fantastic for the comp. I agree. More of it. And what's the minimum number of wins that a side's going to need to make the Division 2 finals? Gee, I'm having a look. Under us, <laughs> oh, I'd say, that's a four. What do you want? Five? Five or yeah, six? Yeah, I reckon you're looking at ten. Yeah, you've got to go another four, yeah. so ten. Yeah. Ten? Because yeah. uh, everyone plays each other. I don't think these two will be so friendly on Saturday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> We're always friendly. Yeah. <laughs> and who will be the first side to be a, become AFL Premiers? Fremantle or the Gold Coast? Fremantle. We ask all the curly ones. Free man? Free man. No problem. Well, with that, uh, we've brought you another Southern Football League web, web show. Thanks, as always, to our major sponsors and the leader community newspapers, localfooty.com.au. Check them out. Check us out this Saturday afternoon from 2pm, where we'll be live at Princess Highway Reserve, watching these two guys lead their teams out to battle in what will be one black and white contest. Don't forget to tune in also on Sunday morning from 11 till noon where Barnsley, Sam Robertson and myself will bring you all the Southern Footy League news of the week along with some special guests along the way and th especially thanks to these guys for coming in and uh, giving us their time for, for this edition of the web show. Uh, I'm Rowan Schreit, good footy equals good times, thanks for joining.